so that is what we call um, protein engineering work. That is the multiple, most critical uh, process during a sensor de development. Mm -hmm. We pick up, we we pick up those, we amplify those genes which encode the GPCRs from our human genome, from our human DNAs. We clone those stuff, use a technology called PCR, polymerase chain reaction. We got the DNA encoding those GBCR, and then we can use some enzymes to split it into like two or three different segments. And then you got some slot to do, and, and you, got, you, like, you got like one slot if you cut it uh, you cut it this way, you got one slot, and then I clone, we clone the fluorescent protein from... Um, jellyfish? Yes, from jellyfish, the green fluorescent proteins from the jellyfish, the red fluorescent proteins from the coral. So we clone the fluorescent protein from the coral or from the jellyfish, and then we got the DNA fragment, and uh, we insert the DNA fragment into the GPCR slot, and uh, these three parts comes together, was sealed by some enzymes, and uh, we, in this way, we got the whole DNA sequence for uh, neurotransmitter sensors. Actually, um, you, you cannot just do it that way and got a very perfect sensor with good expression level with good fluorescence even with good signal to noise ratio you need to you need to engineer very carefully where to insert the fluorescent protein into the gpcr backbone and you need to also engineer the linkers the, the linker protein or dna sequence between them that will define how efficient how, how the efficient of the so-called conformational change transfer from GPCR to the fluorescent protein. There might be some linkers. So you need to tweak, uh, you need to do, we call it random mutation to those linker sequence to see which amino acid is the perfect. And after that, we also engineer some, uh, do some mutations Within the GPCR, we call uh, the the uh, neurotransmitter is very small that will bind with some specific place within the GPCR. We call it binding pocket, mm -hmm. and within the, the binding pocket, um, DNA sequence will or amino acid sequence will define the affinity between sensor or between GPCR with the neurotransmitter. So we also engineer some sort of uh, s specific site within the binding pocket to get the perfect sensor with, um, with good spatial, temporal, uh, uh, not, not, with fast kinetics, with good signal to noise ratio to transfer the uh, chemical signal into fluorescent signal. And uh, Yes, that is a lot of work. If you are a, a first year graduate student, just start to do such kind of, we call it protein engineering, you take like three days or two days, or like three days to get such a construct and test it whether it works or not. And uh, to get a perfect sensor, probably you need to try more than 1,000 alternatives to get a perfect construct. And uh, you need to, uh, that, that, that is a lot of work. But, but we, we figure out some way to do it parallelly. So that can save some time, but it's still a lot of work to, for a graduate student to get such a perfect sensor. And uh, actually, I'm very lucky. When I joined the lab, we already got those sensors. Some of our prior students in our lab already built those sensors and tested those sensors on 
the most simple uh, model culture cells, artificial culture cells in the medium, cells in the medium. We tested those sensors and we already know that it works. And what, so, so it turns to me, I, I take the job to create transgenic animals to test whether their the sensors can whether there's this sensor can be used for in vivo studies yes. in intact animals in the living brain yeah. during specific behavior